I have the labyrinth shirt and earrings on because this is going to be a doozy. I'm not sure how many times I'm going to need to film this to get a review that makes sense. back to the crypt. I haven't had the best luck so far with books that have been recommended to me lately, um, which is not any fault of anyone who's recommended those books. It's just the luck of the draw. To be fair, I do tend to be pretty critical of books in general. So even if I was finding books that weren't for author tubers, I do have a pretty high rate of I'm not interested in this book and moving on to the next book. Spoiler alert! Um, I almost chucked my e-reader through a window. I want to do a disclaimer right here and now that I do recognize I am somewhat a little biased on my review of this particular book. And the reason for that is because I am a practicing witch. So some of the information within this book, I guess the most polite way to phrase it would be put me off my tea. And I recognize that because this is a fantasy book, technically, so long as it makes sense within the rules of the world that were crafted, fair game, mostly. I do think there is a discussion to be held about if you have an urban fantasy set in today's realm, how you should and shouldn't be portraying certain stereotypes. I would get into that, but that's really not the point of my videos. The point of my videos is to look at the actual writing elements. I want you guys to understand that there is a biased side of me to this review, like pretty badly. Like I'm always, I'm always gonna be biased. Everyone is biased, but like strong bias on this one. And I do recognize that and I'm trying to keep it out of the rest of my review. So I wanna get this done with right here and now. That part of the book made me very frustrated and it's a large portion of the book. With all of that taken care of, let's get into Song of the Dryad. Okay, this book was published in 2018, and I just double-checked world events. And there isn't a ton to say so much as there were fires, really bad ones, over in California. Now, California gets on fire a lot, but 2018 was particularly horrendous. It is an element of global warming and just one more sign that the environment is having problems. I wouldn't doubt that that probably affected some of the writing because it definitely does seem as if the idea of the forest and keeping it safe is a major theme. Although it's interesting because in this book the protection of nature is from protection against man, like direct action against man versus the longer term effects of man not properly caring for the earth, which leads to disasters such as the major fires. Structure of the book is standard, thank goodness. Um, standard is my favorite structure, to be perfectly honest. I very rarely run across books where I enjoy experimental structures. Most books don't do experimental structures well, so I appreciate that this has a standard structure. Follows chronological order. Um, the very beginning does have a little intro when the main character is a child. It's an interesting intro. It does what it's supposed to do. It grabs you. I will say though, there was a part of me that almost wished we had the introduction from the viewpoint of maybe the mother, because the mother character plays a pretty major role and yet isn't actually present in the rest of the book primarily. It just would have been interesting to see the mother's viewpoint introduced a little sooner, just simply because we have no time to attach to her as a character before she disappears. So throughout the entire book, the main character kind of flows through situations, get pulled willy-nilly, and doesn't seem to have a huge dedication getting anything done, which is very concerning to me personally because if I had a parent who was kidnapped by the Fae and I was given a task by the Fae, I would be putting everything on the line to get that task done as quickly as possible. And the fact that the character repeatedly doesn't, and there are long stretches of days or even weeks where the character doesn't do anything except ogle her love interest, that was really concerning to me and straight up confusing. There were times where I actually stopped reading the book 
pulled back and like backtracked and then went forward a little bit and backtracked again, trying to figure out why she was so insanely calm when her mom was still kidnapped and she had only a few days left. There are entire sections very close to when she's running out of time that she's just hanging out with a boy she likes and the guys will tell her like, oh, do you wanna go do something? And she's like, I don't know, what about you? And I'm sitting there being like, your mom is kidnapped, find the rest of the stones. Like, what? It's really strange. Um, other aspects that really kind of tipped me off that there was something not quite right were times when she would have to do something to get an item she needs for her little quest she's doing for the Fae to get her mom back from them. And she pretty much would have to steal these items from individuals. These individuals would pretty much catch her in the act. She was caught in the act more than once and zero consequences occurred. And when I say consequences, I mean consequences towards her personally. There are no scenes I can think of where she loses anything. Not really. And her mom being lost, I don't consider that a loss because that is a plot element in order to propel her forward into her journey. So I don't necessarily consider that a personal sacrifice. She does not sacrifice for anything throughout the entire book. Um, also, the relationship between her and Grandma falls off the map pretty soon. I thought Grandma was going to be like buddying up with her for this journey of helping her, but no, Grandma ends up just working in the restaurant all the time and we almost never see her till the tail end. What was the point of that? There's just, there's so much lost potential for me because if she had had to lose something like getting expelled from school for example she gets caught stealing something she's taken down to a police station her dad gets super mad at her she gets grounded possibly expelled from school detention something like give me a consequence give me a sacrifice that she had to make to rise the stakes of this book it was like reading fan fiction more often than not because there were no actual hard consequences for the character. The character didn't actively have to work for anything. Another sign that the character didn't have to work for anything in the book was concerning her psychic abilities that were awakening or some such. Yeah, um, I'm, tr I'm trying, I'm trying not to be biased here, but that information about crystals is not accurate. at least how myself and many other witches are taught traditionally is crystals like everything else they are a focus or they're a tool they don't do anything for you they don't magically unlock things that's that's not no you're gonna learn something today amethyst right here amethyst this is actually from my hometown this is from a mine near where i grew up If I have this amethyst in my hand, there is no third eye opening. That is not a thing. The theory, you can program things to do something. So you could charge this. By the way, that's another thing that was really concerning. Please do not use sage. Uh-uh. There are so many other ways to cleanse, like moonlight, talking to it, breathing on it. Like, anyway, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting in a rant, I'm trying not to but you need to work essentially so if i wanted this to assist me in intuition or something like that which by the way there are other crystals that are far better for intuition and third eye not amethyst but amethyst is very visually alluring so a lot of people are drawn to it theoretically you could program this to assist you in focusing psychic ability maybe but you would have to put intention into it so one way you could do that is you could hold it breathe on it and you can pretty much do a spell an intention setting spell but you would have to set intention into this sucker for it to do much of anything and even then depending on how you believe these things to work and how you personally work in your practice you might have to go through a lot of other steps she buys the this at a store and then just instantly starts having visions no and again i recognize this is a fantasy world okay 
I recognize that. So in her fantasy world, I guess stones just magically give you powers as soon as you touch them. If, if that were the case though, I kind of feel like a lot of the other witches would have been like armed to the teeth with crystals when they went on their little excursion later in the book. Like it's just, if you're gonna set up a world in which crystals, as soon as you buy them, just instantly unlock abilities, I would think that other people in the metaphysical world, in the occult, would have also stumbled upon that fact. The character just doesn't work for anything, and that whole crystal, crystal fiasco just showcases she doesn't put actual serious effort into anything she's doing. Her powers just come up when she needs them. They just magically work, and so there's no actual concentrated effort being put behind what she does. I think the only thing I can think of that she puts any effort into is her music, like she actively practices it. That was another interesting thing. She kind of, near the end, again, another spoiler alert, she kind of like gives up on her dream of music to be the shrine keeper for a series of creatures that she literally just met and who kidnapped her mother. Like maybe, maybe be a little bit more clear. She had a complex relationship with her music. Like she enjoyed playing, but she didn't like the idea of being an orchestra. Because she's like in an orchestra thing in, in school and she doesn't seem to be like against it. But like she gives up that dream of hers so easy. It's just... Anyway, another thing is um, as far as character growth, her father actually has more character growth than she does throughout the course of the book. But even then, like we don't actually see the growth showcased actively. So another spoiler alert, at the end, she's talking to this guy trying to convince him of the Fae and what's going on. And her dad is just standing back there passively doing nothing. Even though he's on her side at that point, like my dad's a tech guy. But if I were trying to convince this other guy who's possibly dangerous that, hey, you need to shut this down, bad things are happening. And like, my dad would get involved, especially if his wife was one of the kidnapped victims. Like my dad would 1000% be backing me up and being like, you need to listen to my daughter. I know what she's saying sounds insane, but I can attest that this is what's going on. Like, he doesn't stand up for her at all. Like, where's the growth? So the message of the book, honestly, I don't know. I, I suppose you could look at the message of the book being maybe environmental awareness. For me, it def as someone who does practice magic, it reads off of just believe and that's good enough. You don't need to work towards anything. You don't need to put in effort or serious study or research into it. You can just pick it up and it will magically start working for you. I don't think that's a healthy message, but sometimes a book can just be entertaining and that's okay. For me, I don't see this book as succeeding in that realm. So um, overall, I actually do know a little bit about this author because I ran into them on AuthorTube a while ago, mostly doing editing content because this author is a freelance editor. Um, and as far as grammar and sentence structure, um, wonderful work. The book was pretty much perfect. I can't remember any grammatical errors, but Honestly, um, I don't read books for whether or not they have really, really, really great grammar. I read books for really good characters. And it's sad because this book, if I were to compare it to something like Savior's Champion, for example, which I'll put a link for my review up above, but Savior's Champion had tension in its scenes. While I am not a fan of the characters or their motivations, at least I was able to feel the tension of the scene because there were consequences. The author, Jenna, understood consequences and made sure her characters felt them. I didn't always agree with how they, you know, completely played out, but they worked in that they created tension in scenes. The fight scenes had tension. There's none of that tension in this book because there aren't any consequences. And it's such a shame because there's a lot of potential for the idea, but because the characters don't work for anything, 
because the characters just get everything handed to them, especially the main character, because of that, nothing feels earned. I often found myself wishing that the characters were doing things that they weren't doing. So like near the end, for example, she gets distracted by this boy so much. I was actually kind of hoping, what if he's secretly a fae, but like trying to distract her so she can't actually complete the job so they can keep her mother forever, ha <laughs> ha. Like I was actually, I was, I was all game for that and it didn't happen. And I was quite disappointed, honestly, because that would have been spice. That would have been some fire in that book. I was, I wanted fire. I wanted fire so badly and it just didn't happen. Um, and so for me, I found the book really frustrating and really disappointing. Every time where I thought there were going to be at least some kind of consequence, some kind of risk, her dad would get mad and yell at her, like something. Nothing happened. Who knows? If you weren't a witch and you don't necessarily mind about these fantasy elements and maybe consequences in books make you anxious. Maybe um, you don't want a lot of tension in your books. You maybe want something super, super, super casual. Maybe you'll like this book. Um, and I, there's no judgment there. Like if that helps you relax, I mean, the world's so crazy. Who am I to judge? But that's what this book is. So at least to me, that's what it read as. If you have any suggestions for indie author books, or small time authors that you would like me to review, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. I'll see what I can do. My reading list is kind of extensive, but I'll do the best I can. I have a couple of more promising books coming up, hopefully. Um, so I'm really looking forward in doing more reviews for you guys. So thank you so much for watching. And um, let's hope fourth time's the charm for this series. <laughs>